Welcome to November. It's been a busy month this last month. I haven't been home much. John's been kicked out of the country again. Although rumor has it's voluntary. I don't know. We're hoping to see him back next week. He's been gone for a couple weeks. Sean's the only one that's been around and frankly he's been busy too. But nonetheless, this month we're going to take a look at backdrop paintings. Actually, we're going to start with painting clouds, and uh, I've started to do that. We've also been working on some uh, creature comforts. Uh, my guest uh, crew member for this month is, well, it's my wife, Wendy Deverell. She's been helping me uh, get uh, some curtains put in, and we'll show you what it looks like. It really has done an amazing job to start it making it look very finished. In any case, come on in. We'll show you what we've got going for this month. So let's go. Well, here we are inside, and you can see this was uh, this is an experiment, and I think it's important that if you're going to do something to understand, you're not going to be perfect at everything. I've painted clouds before, but this was an attempt to kind of look at the three different ways I've painted clouds in the past. You may or may not be able to tell this is a stencil type. This is a blend of stencil and hand painted, and then over here is a hand painted cloud. And Sean and me kind of looked at them all and. We want, the, the goal of the backdrop is to kind of just be there so you can go, wow, there's some clouds in it. and it just kind of, it's not to be the draw of your attention. And we really felt that these clouds here kind of just drew your attention. Not bad clouds, but we like the more muted, more subtle cloud effect that we have here. And so we're kind of going to go with that method right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I painted these clouds so that you can you know, take it for what it's worth and learn from it. But it's really important. I, I, I reiterate this uh, when I go through it, but I'm also going to say it again. It's really important that this stays very light. You're using a very light amount of, of, of the rattle can paint. Yeah, you're going to get some bright spots here and there, but that's fine. The goal is to keep the paint nice and light so it's nice and subtle. In any case, let's go take a look at how you paint clouds. So here we are, and I'm going to just show you how I paint some of the clouds. I kind of decided to go with the, the white spray can, rattle can, and um, some stencils. These are the stencils. Now, these were made by a friend of mine. Mike Whiteman made these for, uh, for me. And they're just, I've bought commercial ones before. These ones just happened to, he already made, and so they work really well. And they're just different styles of stencils with things cut on them. You know, big ones, little ones, and uh, we use the small, thin ones for lower clouds, and we use the bigger ones for the upper clouds. And then uh, I'm going to grab some, and they're just a bunch of them. We have about eight or nine, maybe even ten of these things. And they're just cut up, and they're just simple, nothing more than, than some uh, uh, poster board, white poster board that's just been cut in random patterns. And I'll show you how we use these. And... Uh, just a second here, I'm going to go get some paint. So after we take the stencils, we're then going to take, a, this is just a, a white primer. I like white primer. It's a good flat color. It, uh, primer seems to spray a little finer mist, and so I kind of like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to climb up here. I'm going to show you how I, I paint these. But basically, if this is my, my surface here, I'm going to take and put this about one to two inches off of that surface and then I'm going to take this can and I'm actually going to be between 12 and 14 maybe as far as two feet away from the stencil and I'm going to just kind of work in a circular area kind of following this thing a little bit but I'm not going to try to get out the edges I'm just going to get on here and the goal of this is to get enough paint that it's white but not enough that you cover the blue color and we'll show you how we do that. So uh, just a second here, I'm going to climb up onto the table and I'm going to show you how it's done. Okay. So I don't know if you can see me or not. We're going to hope for the best, but here's what we're going to do. We're just basically going to start right here. And actually, I want to start with the smaller clouds down lower. So I'm going to start with some small clouds down low. And I've kind of decided that my horizon is about halfway. So my low clouds are going to be about like here. 
and I can be a little below the horizon because I'm going to paint some backdrops and all that. So I've got my thing sitting off here just a bit, and that's all I'm doing, just like that. And if you can't see it, that's good because you're going to go back and forth with a couple of them. So what I'm looking for is a few different small ones here. Now there's a little white in here. And again, I'm just trying to, not a lot, just a little bit. I'll get another small one here so we can get across here. I'm kind of organizing these across. Here's another small one here. So we're going to just take that. We're just going to, and again, this is nothing magical. Just, just like that. And there you go. There's the clouds. Now, to build on those, I'm going to take this first one. And I'm going to kind of build just on this area right here. So I'm just going to, just like that. Nothing fancy. Very light. Very, very light. And then here's the cloud right in here. You may or may not be able to see this, but as time goes on, it'll build up. There you go, just like that. I'm going to grab another one here. I'm going to put this one just a little farther down here. I'm going to, there we go. I think I like that. And I'm just kind of building the clouds as we go along. Nothing fancy. Yeah, little Bob Ross there, you know. Just slowly putting them in. There you go. And then we'll grab another one here. And I think this one will look really good if I just hit the center section. There we go. And then I'm going to take this a little bit more down here. There. And then I'm going to push this right back up here. I'm going to grab another. I'm going to go right back to another one here. And we'll take a little bit more here. There we go. And I think I want to put this cloud just a little more like so. There. Okay. And I like this one. As I'm looking at it, I just kind of decide where I think it needs to go. I think I'm going to put this one right here on the end. There we go. Yeah, I'll build a little bit right down here. There you go. And then... All right, let's see. Let's... Now I'm building right on top of some of these other clouds, so I'm not trying to... Just a little bit here and a little bit there. Nothing too fancy in that. Pretty much might be the end. Now I'm going to take a little small clouds and I want to run these right out to the edge. Again, this is not anything more than that. There you go. And now I'll grab the camera. Show you what it looks like. Okay, so there's the clouds in their final painting. You can see also that the curtains have come in over top of it, and it really gives it a nice finished look. Again, one of the things that the purpose of the curtains is to really begin to just kind of create a finished look. And it also serves a second purpose as I back out here, you'll notice. That what it does, and it, it may not notice so much here in the video because of the fact that a camera bleaches out with the, the lighting effect, but when you're sitting in the video room, you, you come up to the table, yeah, you see the blue curtain, you notice the lights are there, but it's not the draw of your attention anymore. It used to be when we came in without the curtains in here, it was a huge draw of our attention. But now, you, when you look at it, it's actually just, okay, there's a lights there, and then you immediately look, turn to the table, so it's really impressive. Also, notice the real light, airy blue colors that fit in between those clouds. So it's all coming together now. It's really starting to look good. So here, I'm going to back out a bit. Oop, why not? And you can just see the lights that are there. Also, as I begin to turn this, you'll actually see that I've got a lot of this done. Now, I got about uh, 
about 20 feet of uh, backdrop done. It took me less than a couple minutes to get it done. Um, probably total time uh, spraying the whole thing. I got it done in about 25-30 uh, minutes to get that 20 feet done. So roughly about a minute a foot. So it's not that bad at all. So it goes very quickly. That's one of the advantages of this method. And if you make a mistake, you just simply grab the blue paint and paint over it again and start again. So let's put some buildings in front of this and see how it looks with that. Okay, so here's a building in place and I'm gonna pan around and let you see the rest of the buildings in here. I borrowed a few buildings from around the layout, but you can see that the clouds are there, but it's just a muted, very muted, very there, but it's not the draw of your eye as you go through. And I'll kind of focus this so you can get an idea. So as you can see, there's a, another building, and it, it will break up the clouds themselves as you go through this. You can see that corner right there kind of disappears with the cloud going through there. And then that's a paper flat in front of it there. I'm going to zoom in on that if I can. I am. I'm zoomed all the way. So there you go. That's kind of just giving an idea of how this would look. Now, granted, the land mass is not painted down below. But again, it's just to kind of give a real airy light feeling. And those curtains really do make a great effect at keeping the, the focus on the layout and not on the lighting up above. So let's talk about what else we're going to be doing this month. Is we got Colorado Springs yard completely done. And this is a yard that's on a curve. It's got a little straight section here. But the radius, this inside radius here, the, the curves on them are about uh, 52 inches. So just to kind of give you an idea, even on the nice thing about doing these even on a radius like 52 inches is the cars will easily couple together and go on their way. So using large radiuses to build a, a yard on a curve is not a problem at all. This outside one is over 60 inches. So it makes it very handy to work with this. It allows me to, to conform my yard to into the area that I meet. Now this yard here, this is not a main yard. This is basically, the purpose of this yard is actually going over here will be a, um, the uh, Mandrake, I believe that's what it's called. But anyway, the, the, the coal plant that's in uh, Colorado Springs, that's going over here. So this is basically the storage area for all those cars that are coming in that will be empty and full. They get shuffled out and over into here to be dumped into the uh, coal dump area here for the yard. And that's what's going up in here. So a lot of that plant is going to be a backdrop with some areas in here. Mostly this area here will be just the coal dumping area that we have right here. Um, so that's kind of what's going on around there. As I pointed out, we're doing creature comforts mostly for this layout room. And as you can see, the curtains are in. That really helps a lot in not drawing your eyes to the lights. The other thing Sean and me noticed right away, when as soon as we put those curtains in, boy, did the sound begin to stop bouncing around as much in the room. You may not be able to tell in the, on the videos, but boy, when I was putting up just the hardscapes before we got anything done, a lot of sound would bounce off. And with the sound locomotives, it was really very distracting. We've put these uh, new uh, curtains in place, and boy, what a dramatic change it made. And understand, we have one here, one here, and one on the next one, and so there's three layers of these curtains that are basically blocking, and they go from the top of the backdrop to the ceiling. So a lot of that sound now is not going to be bouncing off from the walls into there. The other thing that's going to be happening over the next month or so is I'm going to have another guest uh, crew member come in, and that's my father-in-law. Is actually coming to town here and we're going to be laying down uh, some uh, flooring in here we got some hardwood floors coming in here and also some carpeting it's also going to have a dramatic effect on the layout room itself it'll be much more finished looking much more professional looking and it will be very comfortable to come in and work in this room the other thing it's going to do is really begin to knock that sound down Right now, when I dial a phone, when we first dialed, we got a, a phone over in Denver. You got a little bouncing going on. We tried it the other day, really muted it down quite a bit. And I expect the same to be true 
when we go ahead and add in that carpeting. The last of the curtains that will be done by my wife, Wendy, will be anywhere down here where it's against the blue of the wall. That area right there is going to have a brown curtain that's going to be, that's actually this color came from. It should be a good match. And those uh, colors, that, that, that curtain will also be against that back wall. That will also mute a lot of it down. Now the curtains aren't going up everywhere, but main, basically on the outside walls where the blue would be showing. So that's what we've got going on right now, and that's what we've been working on. Really, the shop is quite a mess. I haven't been running trains much because I'm busy finishing up the last pieces of the details. I'm in fact, the back of this backdrop right here. The other side had not been finished mudding and, and cleaned up. It's all done now. So that had to be done before the curtains went up in here. And then the carpeting's all being done. So the floors have got to be all cleaned and ready to go. So a lot of manual labor type stuff that's really not enjoyable to watch, but it's what's going on. When Sean comes out here next, the two of us will be working on the Denver engine facility. And the key focal point of that facility is going to be the turntable. And we have to place that first. So the first thing we'll be working on is where does the turntable go? Where does the uh, engine, the roundhouse go and the diesel facility? And kind of figuring all that out and making sure that the drawings I made are going to work. We also kind of looked at it and we've already started to change some of the ideas. One of the advantages of building a large layout is, well, you kind of lay everything out and you draw it, but then you kind of, when you get to that area, you kind of refine it a little bit. And so one of the two things we're looking at is the building has settled a little bit back in that corner and the walls cracked there a little bit, and I'm going to be patch patching that up. Um, but Sean brought out a really good point in that it was we could cove those corners very easily. We have all the stuff to do it here, and I think that's what we're going to be doing. So we're going to be looking at placing that roundhouse. We'll start coving the corners there and getting those all set and ready to be painted, and then basically um, get them all ready and clouded. I also will be continuing to do backdrop work here too. So that's kind of what's going to be going on for the next couple months. Not a lot of rail stuff going on, mostly just making the layout room a lot more comfortable to work in. But, you know, the holidays are coming up, and that's not a bad thing, because usually during that time, there's not a lot of time to do much anything in the railroad, or if I am, I'm just putzing around on little projects. So getting these creature comforts done first will be a huge, huge comfort to walk in and just have, spend some quiet time just working on a project or a model out here. So in any case, that's what's been going on this month. Thanks for subscribing, and I hope you enjoy the updates. Oh, one more other point. Somebody asked me a couple different questions, and I think I'll point this out. My turnouts here, I don't stain, pre-stain the ties ahead of time. A lot of the reasons why I don't pre-stain them is because what I like to do is I like to take and use my airbrush and paint all the track, the rusty rail color that, that the rails will be, and then I come back in and hand paint randomly the ties so I get a little different look everywhere as I go throughout the place. So pre-staining them and then painting them again just does a lot of extra work and it just doesn't make sense to do that. So I pretty much lay them down raw and then when I paint them, I get all the ties at the same time. The other thing, somebody asked me about, well, Mike, when you cut down your, your uh, homosode to a thinner, what do you do with the spare pieces that are left over? Well, here you go. We actually lay them in. When I cut them, when I cut them down shorter, the piece that's left over is the exact same height. Imagine that. Somebody must have did this mathematically. It's the exact same height as the uh, cork road bed. And so what I do is oftentimes I take that that thin sheet and I lay it down on top of the homosode to build this up in the yards to make it the same height as the cork road bed so that it's a nice even surface all the way around. And it just gives it a little more realistic look. So anyway, those were two questions that came up. If you have some other questions, please feel free to comment in the comment section or shoot me an email. It's in my description of the channel. You can certainly email me and ask me questions, so don't be shy. No question is too silly, and I do try to get back to you as quickly as possible. But in any case, enjoy this month. Happy model railroading, and happy modeling wherever you're at.